Have you ever thought of a home in space? I want to tell you that it's getting closer to reality and it will replace the ISS in a few years. Well, I'm talking about the vast space station, a special system especially thanks to big contributions from SpaceX, and images and videos of the final design, especially the interior of this first commercial space station, were just officially revealed, far beyond your dreams. So let's take a tour of this great space station on today's episode of TechMap. The ISS is scheduled to retire, and there are many plans to replace it. Of course, some stations are showing positive signs while others are still struggling with delays. One of the stations that is progressing the best right now is the Vast Space Station, which, ironically, does not belong to the NASA program. It is currently scheduled to launch in September 2025, which means it has the earliest construction schedule of any commercial space station. And as we are at the end of 2024, this is the time to reveal its designs. Recently on X, Vast officially announced today Vast unveiled the final design design for Haven 1, the world's first commercial space station, setting a new standard. Guided by visionary designer Peter Russell Clark and astronaut Andrew Fustel, we're pushing the boundaries of life in space with human-first design led by Hilary Coe. More interestingly, the company also outlined its plans for the Haven 2 station, describing how it will deploy the station in segments starting in the late 2020s Haven 2 will start with a single module launched on a Falcon, heavy as soon as 2028. The module will be based on Haven 1, but will be 5 meters longer and have twice the usable volume as Haven 1, and also will have docking ports on each end. VAST then plans to launch three additional modules roughly six months apart in 2029 and 2030. The modules will be docked together in line. The modules will be effectively identical to one another but outfitted with different lab facilities. The next phase of the station's development will involve the launch of a larger core module, seven meters in diameter, on a SpaceX Starship in 2030. The four existing modules will undock from one another and attach to four separate ports on the new core module in a cross shape. There will be an additional docking port as well as a separate berthing port and robotic arm for visiting vehicles not able to autonomously dock. Along with the reveal, videos and images of the interior were also released. And wow, I can't believe this is the design of a space station. It literally looks like a house. In the videos and images, we see astronauts moving in an extremely modern and neat corridor something that the ISS cannot have. The space station will also have an impressive window design, allowing for a view of the surrounding space. Next, we can see that astronauts can perform communication functions via wireless devices, and that is contributed by SpaceX's system, which I will talk about later. We can also see many systems and devices integrated and stored behind walls that look so simple. In addition, we can also see personal activities, such as health monitoring, exercise, eating, and sleeping, which I think looks simple, but extremely luxurious. Yeah, all the most important elements of life that we thought could not exist in space have appeared in the vast space station revelations. But that's just the overview. Now let's dive into the description provided by VAST. In its update, VAST confirmed that Haven 1, the first module of the vast space station, represents a new standard that merges human-centric design with function, introducing features for unparalleled comfort, productivity, and microgravity lab advancements. VAST is confident that the company is a pioneer on the path to long-term living and thriving in space. VAST's inaugural station combines the functionality of its state-of-the-art facilities for scientific research, technological advancement, and global collaboration in low Earth orbit. LEO with its remarkable dedication to sophisticated and human-centric design. In terms of design, VAST said the interior design of the space station will be warm and welcoming, making accessible spaces for everyone with form and function merging to provide comfort and a higher quality of life for long-term missions. We'll go through each area of the station. The VAST space station is also designed to accommodate spacecraft, specifically the SpaceX Dragon. Once the spacecraft docks at the station's port, the crew will open the hatch to easily enter the station explaining in more detail the wall designs and integrated systems. VAST wrote, a real-time display shows the station's status with temperature and lighting controls, and optimized cargo compartments ensure essential supplies are stored efficiently. Notably, Haven 1's interior surfaces are soft and padded to provide an added safety component for crew and visitors as they float throughout. Next, above and below the corridor, there are rooms called crew quarters, created to give astronauts a space to rest and recharge after 
helicopter work. These rooms are larger than those on the ISS, providing space for many activities like changing, entertaining, and communicating with family on the Earth. In this system, sleep is highly focused on because it is important for space exploration. To overcome the problems in environments that are different from the Earth, VAST designed a sleeping system that is roughly the size of a queen bed, provides a customized amount of equal pressure throughout the night, and accommodates side and back sleepers alike. In addition, each room will be installed with storage compartments, a dressing table, and a customized set of amenities. The center of the station will be the common area, which serves multiple functions such as scientific research, dining, exercise, and relaxation. This area will be 24 cubic meters in volume, including the dome-shaped glass window I mentioned earlier. It is described by VAST as a centralized window, allowing astronauts to experience a full view of Earth. The window is arced, measuring 1.1 meters. In the center of the room, there is a 0.9-square-meter deployable multi-use table span that can be used for the aforementioned activities and can be folded back into the floor when not in use. The exercise system has also been focused on because this is also an important factor when living in space. For example, vast engineers created a resistance band system which is considered effective for maintaining and improving muscle, bone, and cardiovascular health because it is capable of performing both linear and rotational resistance exercises. As you can see in the video, the station has some parts with the unique and prominent wooden design. This design uses fire-resistant maple wood veneer slats that have been genuinely tested for safety. This new design brings warmth and nature and also impacts mental health in the unique environment in space. Adjacent to this area is the lab where microgravity research, development, and manufacturing will be carried out. VAST said that behind the walls there are 10 mid-deck locket equivalent MLE to store research products. The entire lab can be remotely controlled and monitored via SpaceX's Starlink internet system. This innovation will help enhance research efforts. The entire design of the vast space station was created by designer Peter Russell Clark and astronaut Andrew Fustel. Russell Clark said, Astronauts living in zero gravity pose unique design challenges. Creating an environment that is both highly efficient and naturally comforting leads to totally new results. Haven 1 interiors are unprecedented, precisely engineered and sensitively designed to ensure its occupants thrive in space. Andrew Fustel shared, so much of our learning on ISS explores how living in microgravity affects the human body, both physically and psychologically. And one takeaway I've had is that intuitive design isn't a luxury in that regard. It's key to ensure astronauts can work and live in space seamlessly. To see Haven 1's design solve many of the challenges we faced aboard the ISS, and to use the progress we made there to ensure we can do this long-term caring while for ourselves is just extraordinary. Also, Jared Isaacman, commander of Polaris Dawn Spacewalk Mission, expressed under the tweet of Max Hout, CEO of VAST, congrats Max, and to the AtVAST team, thanks for investing in and helping build a more exciting future. Eager to see Haven 1 launch. Yeah, what will appear in the first commercial space station is truly unbelievable. The VAST space station is really capable of replacing the ISS. I really look forward to its launch in the future. If you agree with me, please respond, let's go, in the comments section. Then like, share this video, and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. And it's even more amazing because, in such a great system, we see SpaceX's big contribution. Firstly, the vast space station will be launched on Falcon 9 next year. More than any other vehicle, Falcon 9 is the most reliable vehicle right now to launch an important mission like the vast space station. In fact, Besides the VAST space station, Falcon 9 is also selected to launch Axiom space station, Starlab space station, and possibly Sierra Space's inflatable station, when this company seems to be looking to leave the Orbital Reef project. All three of these systems belong to NASA's program, and as mentioned, Dragon will be the vehicle to support the crew and cargo supply to the VAST space station. Right now, the Dragon is the main vehicle that helps NASA maintain operations on the ISS. Dragon's great achievement and reliability are helping it become the choice for all NASA and private missions, including the Polaris Dawn mission, commanded by Jared Isaacman. In response to Isaacman's congratulatory tweet, VAST said, Thank you for everything you are doing to open the commercial crewed space era with SpaceX. And now they will be partnering with SpaceX and Dragon to further that era. 
SpaceX's next support was also shown in the mentioned description, Starlink. This combination was only announced by VAST this year, but has already made their space station potential significantly stronger even better than the many commercial space stations under NASA's program. With this powerful internet system, communication barriers will be resolved. The results of the research will also be improved, helping us to further expand the frontiers of research and exploration. For SpaceX, they will be able to test the effectiveness of the Starlink system, thereby expanding it to many other systems, including the proposed space station developed by Starship. It is great to see efforts to improve life in space progress positively. With the genius minds, the first homes in space are being built. Space exploration will be expanded from there, and it is for everyone. We may have been worried about finding a system that can replace the ISS, when this legendary station is in its final operating years. And perhaps the answer has been revealed. The vast space station, with the support of SpaceX. Are you ready for the new era it brings? Launched in 1998 and involving the US, Russia, Canada, Japan, and the participating countries of the European Space Agency, the International Space Station became the largest single structure humans ever put into space. With a size of 109 meters, the ISS is compared to a football field, including the end zones, 110 meters, and has the volume of a five-bedroom house or two Boeing 747 jetliners. It is able to support a crew of six people plus visitors. So far, 280 astronauts have journeyed up to the station, representing no less than 23 countries. However, all good things come to an end, and the International Space Station is not exceptional. The aging ISS plans to retire in 2030 and on June 26, 2024, NASA awarded SpaceX a contract worth $843 million to develop the United States deorbit vehicle, USDV. Though the plans are yet to be finalized, the basic idea is that the deorbit vehicle will act like a tugboat, dragging the ISS down into the atmosphere where much of it will burn up on re-entry. That tugboat could be a new spacecraft design or it could be a modification of an existing spacecraft that must function on its first flight and have sufficient redundancy and anomaly recovery capability to complete the critical deorbit burn. At this point, many believe that SpaceX would leverage its operational vehicle that regularly ferry astronauts to and from ISS Dragon. Instead of starting from scratch with a totally new type of spacecraft, SpaceX just needs to upgrade Dragon to meet NASA's requirements. The official version has not yet been revealed by SpaceX, so there is a lot of room for speculation and predictions. First of all, with the ISS's huge size, it would be ideal if they bring their Dragon XL project from the dead. Dragon XL is designed to deliver up to 7.6 tons of cargo, 5 tons pressurized, 2.6 tons unpressurized, to the Lunar Gateway, and weigh no more than 14 metric tons upon arrival. Compared to Cargo Dragon 1 and 2, XL thus offers a 25 to 50 percent improvement. As an expendable spacecraft, Dragon XL is likely going to be much simpler and lighter than SpaceX's recoverable and reusable Dragon capsules. It's also reasonable to assume that the new spacecraft could be substantially cheaper too. Finally, it's conceivable that a recoverable Falcon 9 booster could launch a fully loaded Dragon XL to the ISS without issue, making the cost of launch more or less identical to any other Dragon mission. Additionally, the Draco engines will likely need significant design changes. The required Delta V is 57 meters per second, and to push the 400-ton ISS, the vehicle must generate an impulse of 23 mn per second. To get everything done in 30 minutes, Dragon would need 32 Draco engines, more than double the current number. The more engines, the higher the fuel demand. Their fuel tanks might be lengthened or expanded in volume. Deorbiting the ISS could require 7 to 8 tons, nearly three times more fuel. Currently, Dragon requires about 2.5 tons of fuel for launch, rendezvous, and return. Secondly, you can bring the space station down the atmosphere just by using the atmospheric drag. Thus, you can get the majority of deorbiting through friction in space. In the final phase, you will switch to engines for controlling the final landing point. In order to get more Delta V in the final descent burn, an optimal solution is to have the extra spacecraft. Yeah, with nearly $1 billion funding, I believe SpaceX can totally accomplish a fleet of USDVs serving this critical mission. In the past, 
Russia's space station, Mir, re-entered the Pacific Ocean with the help of two Progress spacecrafts, including Progress M43 and M15. Based on past observations of how other stations such as Mir and Skylab disintegrated on atmospheric re-entry, NASA engineers expect the orbital outpost to break up in three stages. First, the massive solar arrays and the radiators that keep the orbital lab cool will come off. Then individual modules will break off from the truss or the station's backbone structure. Finally, the truss and the modules themselves will tear apart. Much of the material will be vaporized, but large pieces are expected to survive. For this reason, NASA is aiming for an area of the Pacific Ocean called Point Nemo, one of the most remote areas of the world and known as the graveyard of satellites and spaceships. Honestly, we can take a look at how Russia destroyed its retired space station. Progress M43 arrived first and used its engines to boost the station to a higher orbit, allowing for a controlled deorbit early the following year. Progress M15 arrived later, carrying 5,900 pounds of propellant for the deorbit burns. While Mir was losing orbital altitude gradually over time, Progress M15 fired its eight docking and attitude control thrusters. This gradually changed Mir's orbital altitude, and the station then completed two more orbits around the Earth before the final burn using the Progress thrusters and its main rendezvous engine. Mir entered the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of about 100 kilometers and began to disintegrate at about 80 kilometers. While some people suggest various options for the ISS after it retires, NASA remains committed to destroying the station. NASA and its lead partner, Roscosmos, Russian State Space Corporation, are currently grappling with the exacerbating issue of microscopic leaks on the ISS. The agency also revealed that the originally designed parts at the space station's core, which include the modules where the crew lives, with truss structures providing electrical power, cooling, communications, and other capabilities, were designed for a 30-year structural life in low Earth orbit. On June 26, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration revealed an analysis of why it had decided to destroy the station. Before reaching its conclusion, the agency weighed several other alternatives, like disassembling the ISS and returning to Earth or boosting it to a higher orbit with the help of a large spacecraft. Therefore, deorbiting the station at its life's end is the safest and only viable method to decommission the longest-serving crewed vehicle in space in human history. Their study ultimately ascertained that destroying upon re-entry was the only economically or technically feasible option. Considerations of extending the station's lifetime beyond 2030 are still up in the air, with NASA waiting on the agreement of its international partners. Meanwhile, NASA plans to replace the ISS with privately built space stations. And of course, NASA has been chasing this project for a while. More than a year ago, it announced its intent to pursue the development of the USDV. The spacecraft will be owned and operated by NASA, rather than procured as a service as the agency does with ISS cargo and crew transportation. The contract value appears to fit within the expectations NASA set for the program. When Bowersox's predecessor, Kathy Luters, announced plans for the USDV in March 2023, she said the agency came up with an internal cost estimate a little bit short of about $1 billion, but hoped that the industry could offer a lower price. NASA requested $180 million for the program for fiscal year 2024. At an April 30th hearing of the House Science Committee on NASA's 2025 budget request, which seeks $109 million for the USDV, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson suggested the cost had increased to $1.5 billion. He asked members to include full funding for the program in the next emergency appropriations bill. We don't know what the president of Russia is going to do, and we could be in an emergency situation that we have to get this structure that is as big as a football stadium down and down safely. In 2031, he said as the rationale for including funding for the USDV in a supplemental bill. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.